Hi, I'm going to show you how to bring in some descriptive statistics and correlations into Power BI as tables with some easy Python code. And we'll be able to create those tables or um, some other visuals like this kind of correlation heat map below. So let's get started. It's very easy code to go through. So uh, let's kind of take a look at the data set. So you can see here I have uh, quite a few tables that I've created. And I'm going to take you through how I quickly created those. However, the main table is a bike sharing data set. So if we go over to table here and we go to bike sharing, you can see there is a list of numerical columns there. There's season, holiday, weekday, working day, uh, the weather situation, temp, uh, uh, the atmospheric temp, humidity, wind speed, casual riders, registered riders, and total riders. So there's quite a lot of columns to go through. And using a descriptive statistics function or correlation functions can give us some easy statistical wins when we're doing our analysis. So I'm going to show you how to create these tables that I have on the right-hand side here. So let's go back over. And now you see I have this table with the, um, we have the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, and the 75th percentile. Um, we have the count, the max, the mean, uh, the minimum, and the standard deviation for each one of those columns of metrics. Now, for correlations, we have all of our columns, our numerical columns, and they are correlated with the other columns. So you can see there that when we look at holiday and we want to move over, it's correlated with at atmosphere temp um, rather negatively. However, if we look at some of the green, which are highly correlated, and these are filtered to be under one, so we see temperature, and let's say riders is pretty uh, highly correlated. And we can see um, atmospheric temperature and temperature are almost perfectly correlated, of course, because they're both uh, temperatures. But we can see that um, how correlated things are with our uh, total riders and the casual riders or total riders and the specific season. So there's a lot that we can learn. So let me show you how I just created these in Python. So I'm going to go over to transform data. I'm going to bring up the Power Query Editor. And now you see that I have these tables that I've created. I created the summary stats table. I created a summary stats melted, which is a function I'm going to show you. And it's just an unpivot function. And I'll kind of express why I use that correlations and then a correlation unpivoted. So let's go back up to the bike sharing table and then summary stats. And you can see that we have an index and each one of the columns there is laid out as we have in our table. It's quite a wide data set. So let's go through the steps. So you can see I brought it in the source, promoted the headers, uh, we changed uh, type there. The, automatically, they changed uh, numerical columns. And then we ran our Python script. And then we resulted with these two tables. So I'm going to click in to run Python script. And you can see it's very easy, just three lines of code. And what I've done here is when you use any Python in the Power Query Editor, it's called data set. So I resaved the data set as summary because I just wanted summary there. And then summary, I used that data set there. And I just used a very easy function called describe. And that's going to give you your summary stats. Now, once you have that summary stats, you want to reset the index so you can see all the different metrics. And let me just comment out that 
and show you what we get if we don't reset the index. So let's go step by step. Let's let that run. So if I go down the summary, you can see we are given all of our columns, but we don't have the metric name here. And that's because it's hidden in the index. So the way we get that is we just reset the index. And then we say we want to uh, make that be in place or save it in place. So if I remove this and I press OK, and I go down to the summary, you can see now that that index is expressed and we have each one of the metrics. So I just change the, change the type and the name here. We can always rechange this index uh, to a different name such as uh, metric. Now, as we talked about, this is a long data set and this can be quite hard to deal with when you are trying to um, create different visuals. So if I go back over to our uh, visual editor here, if I go back up to that summary stats table, you can see how many particular columns we're dealing with and that can be quite unwieldy. So the best way to handle that is just unpivot that data where we will be given a melted data frame or melted table where I can unpivot that data and just be given a value in a variable instead of all these columns. So let's go back over to our Power Query Editor and let me show you how I did that. It's just one extra line of code and you can see what happens here. We have our variable which is the column name and then for the metric here, we have the particular count, mean, standard deviation, the minimum that we had expressed as before. But now we can go back up to run Python script and I'll show you all I did was add one additional line of code where I said, please melt the data frame and melt it on the index. So, I just passed in index and then what happens is instead of this long column of this long list of columns, we get this unpivoted data frame that we can use here. And I just renamed and I filtered out this instance because this instance was actually just a, uh, a count of rows. And now you see what we get. We have this index and our value. So this is very easy to put together. Now for correlations, it's even easier. If I go over to correlations, you can see what I've been given is also that long list of columns. And then we have our metric here. If I navigate back up to run Python script, let me show you the particular script. So I saved over the data set. I called it correlation and it just correlation equals data set. So we're just saving over the data set. Then I said, okay, I want to take this table and I just want to use the function C O R R. Now by default, this is linear correlation. So it's not nonlinear correlation. And then I, instead of saving over, I just chain together the function reset index. So you can do it that way, or you can either do it this way where you say, okay, I'm going to take that correlation table and just resave it like this, and then call it correlation again equals. So either way, you can do it this way, or we can just leave it as reset underscore index. Both methods will give you the same result. And this hashtag here is just commenting out that line of code. So if I press OK, only this will run um, out of only these two lines will run. So OK. 
and you can see we get our long list of columns. So as we did before, all we want to do is melt this, and we want to melt it along, you know, this particular column. So let's go over to correlation melt. Let's go over to run Python script, open that up. And now what you've seen is I've, all the steps we resaved over the data set, we created our correlation, reset the index. Then I said, okay, I want it to melt or unpivot along the index. And remember the index was our metric names. However, I added one extra line here. I said, okay, I want to set a condition. I don't want things that are correlated at one because when you have a correlation, it goes from negative one to one. And I don't need to see things that are perfectly correlated because the things that are perfectly correlated are correlated along themselves. Um, so I added this condition to say get rid of this. And then finally, I just passed that correlation and resaved over that data frame or table variable. And this is what we get. We get our melted data frame. We have our metric here. We have our value and all the correlations here. And if I close and apply this, you can see what we have is we have these smaller tables here that we can use instead of these long metrics tables. Now you could combine both of those codes and just get the melted table, but I wanted to give you both options. And all I did is for the correlation table is use the, the filter, I mean the visual pane here, and I went over to visualizations, highlighted this, and went over and said, okay, for the cell elements, I just want to color the background. And the background was from negative one to one. And that's what we correlated with. And zero was my center. So this gave me this correlation pattern here. So this is one way to visualize correlation. However, we do have another video that will show you how to use some Python visuals to actually see these correlations. So I hope that gave you a quick and easy way to get some statistics into Power BI and kind of helped with your analysis. Please leave any questions and comments below in the video section. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.